Paprika. Now, what exactly is paprika? A lot of you may not be aware of the fact that paprika is basically one of your American chilies. What happened was, was when the Spanish discovered the chilies in the Americas, they took plants back to Spain. And chili plants are ones that grow extremely easily, they're very prolific. The other thing is that they hybridize very readily and they change quite considerably depending on the soil and climatic conditions that they're growing under. The other thing that happens with chilies and happens with many plants is that you get a process of unnatural selection where human beings who are growing crops of various plants will find some that are particularly appealing. They might look better, they might grow better, the pod might taste a little bit more interesting, whatever. And so they're the ones that they'll continue to propagate. So what tended to happen with chilies was when they were taken to Europe, the ones that a lot of the Spanish grew tended to become milder and milder because in your hot chili, you've got a high level of capsaicin, which is contained in the seeds and the seed bearing placenta of the pod. And this is where you get all the heat from. Now, if you're taking plants that are actually a little bit milder, that don't have as much capsaicin, you are starting to move along towards what is conventionally now referred to as a paprika. If you go to somewhere like Hungary, you will find that they have paprika plants that basically have no capsaicin in them at all. So there's no heat. So you get this beautiful, sweet flavor profile, a little bit, if you could imagine what a bell pepper would be like if it was dried and powdered. That is also essentially what a paprika is. Therefore, if you can think about your whole chili family as a, a scale, and at one end of the scale, you've got a tiny little blistering hot chili, maybe a habanero or a bird's eye, and this is a really hot little guy. And then as you go up your scale and the chili gets bigger and bigger, there are a couple of things that happen. First of all, you will have a higher ratio of flesh to seeds and placenta where most of the capsaicin is. So as the plant gets, as the pod gets bigger and bigger and you get more and more flesh, you get less heat. And eventually right up at this very top end of the scale where you get quite a large pod, you will have one that's got no heat at all. And you will take the Hungarian paprika for instance, where the Hungarians will take this variety of pod and they will grind it into a very smooth powder. And when you taste that on the tip of your tongue, you'll find there's no sharpness or bitterness or heat at all. If you come a little back further down the scale, you'll get the Spanish paprikas. Now the Spanish paprikas will have a little bit of bitterness. They'll generally be a little bit darker in color. Some of them will have some heat. So that's why you'll often see on a label a hot paprika or a mild paprika, but they will have a different flavor profile to the Hungarian one. Why would we have different ones? The Hungarian one we would use in something like a Hungarian goulash, where it's been cooked with veal, we're using quite a lot of paprika, so we want lots of that flavor, but we don't want it to overpower. Use the Spanish mild paprika in a Hungarian goulash, won't work. Sorry, it'll be too bitter. But if you're making a Moroccan dish, a shemula for instance, and you want your paprika to blend with uh, cumin seed, coriander seed, ginger, uh, 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 lots of other spices, allspice cloves, cardamom, etc. Actually, choose the Spanish paprika because that little bit of bitterness and richness that is in the Spanish style of paprika will complement all those other spices beautifully. Somewhere in the middle of this imaginary scale, we have cayenne pepper and we have hot paprika or mild chili, all at around about the same level. Cayenne pepper is not necessarily a very specific variety of pepper. The term was coined many years ago to signify a chili powder that was of a consistent heat level. So if a recipe said a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, that meant that you would be using a chili that was of a, persist, a consistent level of heat. And so everybody knew what they were getting. If you have some hot paprika in the pantry and the recipe says to use mild chili powder, you can actually interchange them. 
they're, they're very similar indeed. Only in Spain you will have a smoked paprika. Now this is absolutely heavenly. And in Spain, they will smoke the paprika pods as part of the drying and curing process. Read your labels, because you will find a lot of people will make what they call a smoked or smoky paprika, which is simply a standard Spanish paprika with smoke flavoring and monosodium glutamate added. The only true smoked paprika is where the pods are actually smoked a little bit like a chipotle chili that you get in your, in your uh, Mexican cooking. Now, smoked paprika is quite strong in flavor. You don't need to use very much. So if you would have used maybe three teaspoons of a Spanish mild paprika in a dish, then I would only use about one teaspoon or a little less of the Spanish smoked paprika because of its strength of flavor. But it is absolutely delicious. And, and the world of paprika is just fantastic because it is so versatile, it adds colour, it adds flavour, and you've got so many options with those different flavour profiles that I mentioned.